Well, we've looked at our dependence upon God. Let's continue with this last bit. At the beginning of verse 18, well, let's back up to verse 17. Who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. Now, here's the new thought. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. If I could put it in a short phrase, I'd say it this way. They should be doers. The book of James says you should be doers of the word, not hearers only. If you have resources and if there were wealthy people in their church, he said, I want them to do good. I want them to be rich in good works. In good works. Does it take money to do good work? Not always. In fact, many times I would say, All of us can be rich in good works, in good deeds. The idea behind this word good is to be beautiful, observable. When a lovely young woman walks by and you observe her beauty and she says, she's a beautiful young woman, that's the idea behind the word good here. I want you to do good works, that when people see them, they end up glorifying God because of the good works that they have done. I want them to be generous. I don't want them to be stingy. I don't want to hold, I don't want them to hold on to these things like it's their last penny or the last thing that they have. And he says, I want them to be ready to share at a moment's notice. I want them to be ready to share at a moment's notice. I heard a speaker tell this story once. It's a true story about when he was a little boy. When he was a little boy, his uncle would come to visit them maybe once or twice a year. The uncle never married and was not able to have children. So every time the uncle would see this little nephew, the one who was speaking this story, he would always have a a pocket full of nickels. In, In America, a nickel is five cents. So it's a small amount of money, but to a little boy, it's a lot of money. So whenever the little boy would come to his uncle, the uncle would reach into his pocket, he would take out a nickel, and he would give it to his nephew. Nephew, it's good to see you again, and here's a little treat for you. And the little boy's face would smile and glow, and he was so happy. And the little boy would go off and play. He came back a little while later, and he saw his uncle, and his uncle reached into his pocket, and he said, here's another nephew. He's starting to think to himself, this is a pretty good deal. I'm going to make sure that I run into my uncle more often. So he'd play a little more, and he'd come back, and he'd see his uncle. His uncle would reach into his pocket, And he would give him the nickel. He'd say, this is working out pretty well. It was a sign of affection for his uncle who had no children. So the little boy was very smart. And he thought to himself, he said, I know what I can do. So he went up to his uncle and he says, uncle, I really appreciate your gifts. Thank you so much. But I'm going to save you some trouble. I said, uncle, I see that there is a big bulge in your pocket, that your pocket is full of these nickels. Uncle, instead of giving me them one at a time, and it seems to me that you're eventually going to give me all of them, why don't you just give me all of them now? And then you won't have the trouble of trying to remember to give me one each time. And the uncle, wisely, instead of getting frustrated or angry, said, My nephew, may I explain why I give you one at a time? He said, I could give you all of the nickels at one time, but then you wouldn't come to visit me. You wouldn't come to talk to me. He says, when I give you a little bit at a time, you and I get to talk more. We get to play more. We get to spend time together. You see, nephew, I come to visit you because I don't get to see you very often. I want to get to know you. But if I give you all of them at one time, you're just going to go off and play and you'll never talk to me again. I go, what a great lesson. That God is the same way. He could give us all of the riches of heaven all at one time and we'd say, wow, that's great. But he says, I'm going to give you a blessing here and a blessing here and a blessing here because the goal is not to make you rich in the riches of this world but that you and I might have this depth of relationship. Come and get to know me. And when we come together in relationship, 
You will know me to a deeper level. I will continue to tr- uh, teach you how to trust me and to live in relationship with me and not to try to hold on to them in a way that is, is tight or stingy. Well, look at the results of what that relationship is. He said, thus, storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. He says, Timothy, would you tell the people who have resources that when they use it for kingdom purposes, they are storing up treasure in heaven? Jesus said the same thing, that we should store up treasures in heaven. Not here on earth where moth and rust destroy and decay, but treasures in heaven. He says, and when they do, you're going to take hold of that which is truly life. There there are studies about, in in America, we have lotteries. Maybe you have the same thing here. If you buy this ticket, you might win $100 million. And people buy these tickets by the million. And then somebody wins. And they've done studies of the people who have won these lotteries a few years later to see if their lives are better because they got all of this money at one time. And almost every one of them would say, my life is worse for having won all of that money. I'd say, really? You could buy a house, you could buy a car, you could go on a vacation, you could pay for your children's education. Almost every one of these people who were dumped on with massive amount of money, their lives were worse. Paul Paul says to Timothy, listen, when you lay this foundation for the future, you're going to be taking hold of that which is truly life, real life, life in the Son of God, life lived in the community of the church. He said, it's going to be amazing what happens when you begin to lay up that kind of foundation. You see, it's all about the heart. That all of this is lessons about the heart. Jesus once said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. Where your treasure is, that is where your heart is also. Where our mind is, that's where our our thoughts, our time, our treasures are going to end up being. And he says, that's not what I mean. I want people who are dedicated in service to me, Timothy, so that they will find out what is truly life, what is truly important, what is truly eternal, in a way that can change them. With that in mind, he says, that's my instructions for those in your church that have wealth. Now, Timothy, let me give you a final word. And in verses 20 and 21, he gives his final advice to Timothy. Remember I said, if you were ending a letter to a friend, what would you say? Here's what Paul says. Timothy, guard the deposit entrusted to you. He stays on a financial type of wording or a financial type of theme, and he says, Timothy, guard it. Protect it. Treasure it. It's value. I have made an investment in you. You have the scriptures. You're understanding what it means in the life of the church. Continue to hold on to it with a grip and, and yet willing to share it. Create some fences. Create some boundaries around this because people are coming in and teaching truth that is not truth and they're getting people off track. And Timothy, you've got to protect the deposit that has been given to you. I can't be there with you right now. But I know you can do this, Timothy. You must do this for the glory of God and for the sake of the gospel and for his church. Timothy, you must avoid the irreverent babble and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. For by professing it, some have swerved from the faith. Timothy, don't get caught up in these arguments. Don't waste your time. I was telling you just a few minutes before about how in our culture now, Instead of gathering information as a priority, sorting information is the priority. We have this debate or going on discussion with a couple of families in our church. I referred to it a few days ago, where they're trying to tell me, Pastor Bruce, why aren't you warning the people about this and this and this and this? And they're just so unhappy because they're so fearful of what's going to happen to our church. And I said, do you notice anything in my teaching that is leading us away from the the inerrancy of Scripture and the truth of God's Word. Well, no, not really, but there's all this danger out there. You need to warn the people. And I said, there's so much information, and I thank you for providing this information, but I can't tell them everything. What I can tell them is the Word of God. 
And if you see me departing from the truths of God's word, then I need that correction. But I can't, I can't respond to all of that. That's what Paul is telling Timothy. In a sense, here, he's saying, Timothy, all of this is happening around you. Be careful. If it's penetrating the church, you've got to root it out. Please, Timothy, you've been given a deposit, but don't get caught up in the babble and the contradictions and the things that they call knowledge. It's not even knowledge. He says, some have even swerved from their faith. They have left faith. Protect it. As a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Treat it as if it's precious gold. You're tired, you're weak, you're somewhat sick. Don't. And his final words are simply, grace be to God's favor. Yeah. Timothy, grace be to We come to the end of Paul's first letter to Timothy with those words. God's As you're seeing or hearing these words, that would be my prayer for you. God's grace. May the grace that we are given be the grace that we share with others. I'm not by nature a very gracious person. I'm a very black and white person. You need to do this. You need to don't do this. Do this. But God's grace is so much greater than what I often give to other people. Timothy. May God's grace be with you. And the implication is, will you then share with those people? Be strong, courageous, don't give up. Timothy, fight the good with the grace that God gives you. And with that, we draw our conclusion to Timothy's first letter from Paul. When we come back next time, we're going to begin Paul's second letter to Timothy, the second one that we know about. It's a very different letter in some sense because it's going to come at the end of Paul's life. When 1 Timothy was written, there were some years yet for Paul to live and there were certain freedoms he has. But when we come back together, we're going to find Paul in prison awaiting his death. 2 Timothy becomes a very personal letter, a very heart-shaped letter. And I think that what you're going to find there will just add to what we've seen so far in this letter called 1 Timothy. So we'll take a break, and when we next come back together, we'll tell you about the background and get started with the letter called 2 Timothy. TVS is a perfect way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support our educational and outreach ministry today. We exist solely upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvseminary.com. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS Ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift at gmail.com.